Hi everyone, my name is Anina and I'm the CEO and founder of 360 Fashion Network. I'm delighted to bring you our next speaker, which is removing with AI uncertainty from fashion retail. We have Ganesh, the CEO of Stylumia. Welcome Ganesh. Hey, hi Anina. Thanks for this wonderful opportunity all the way from India to reach audiences across the world and talking about how we can reduce the overstock and understock problems in retail, which is the most challenging one that to in these tough times using AI. Fantastic, let's get right to it. Hi everyone, let me jump straight in and address how do we tackle the overstocking and the understocking challenge in fashion. Before I do that, let me take you through how the presentation will flow today. We'll look at the fundamental fashion challenge of demand prediction. And why is it demand prediction such a key challenge at this juncture? Then we look at what are the five ways to address this challenge. Knowing just the five ways is not going to help us. We really need to know how are we solving this. Then we look at the various solutions to address this challenge. We look at our client case studies of how they are benefiting and how they are able to address and be ready for the future. We'll end with a question and answer session, of course. Let's jump straight in. What is the fundamental challenge in fashion? It's for decades, we have a huge supply demand gap. Just to give you the magnitude of the supply demand gap, in 2018, the world produced 150 billion garments, and out of which 50 billion garments never sold a single piece, and 50 billion sold at a huge discount. This creates a huge economic challenge. Apart from that, fashion being the number two in carbon footprint just after oil, we have a huge sustainability problem on our hand. Are the current forecasting systems solving it? No. Is there a need of a new way of solving this problem? Definitely yes. Why is it such a key challenge right now? The COVID pandemic has come as a black swan. It's important that we consider this as a new normal so that we are ready for such uncertainties in the future. We have a huge demand contraction with high, in, high uncertainty. We expect this to be a U-shaped recovery than a V-shaped recovery. If this is not acted well, we'll have a significant impact on both the revenue and the inventory in the coming quarters. What are the five ways of tackling this problem? The first one is you should go where the headroom is. It's very important in a demand contraction scenario, particularly when the customer sentiments the customer psychology is going to be very different than when everything was going in the right direction before the pandemic. But how do you discover the headroom of demand that you have? So let's look at that. The overall circle is the overall market demand. Your loyal customers definitely are going to be with you as long as you can take care of their needs. And that's your market share. C1, C2, C3 is the share of your competition along with their loyal customers. Now, how do you find out your headroom? Your headroom is the market share that you don't have, which is overall market minus your market share. Less the market share you won't have. What is the market share that you won't have? It's difficult for you to capture the loyal customer share of your competition, which is the C1, C2, C3. The overall market minus your market share minus the market share that you won't have, which is the blue space, is the headroom. Who are the customers in this headroom? These are the customers who are neither loyal to you nor loyal to your competition. Isn't it a challenge? So far, you have been focusing on your target customer. You have made your merchandise mix for them. You have done everything for that customer. Now you are left with addressing, apart from your loyal customers, the switchers. It's very, very important to understand, to capitalize this, 
you need to close the need offer gap. What are the needs of these customers? I'm not saying that you don't take care of your loyal customers. Absolutely, I think that's priority number one. You really need to identify the needs of your loyal customer post a, a situation like this. For the customer sentiments are not going to be high. They are going to be relatively conservative. At the same time, you really need to look at the needs of the switchers. What are they looking for? Are they looking for value? Are they looking for preserving their prestige during this period? You really need to be clear. One of the common mistakes that we see is that during these times, if you just look at the past data and continue to do what worked in the past and not do what did not work, it may not work for you. This is the common surprise that we find. Now, how do we tackle this? In the Harvard Business Review in 2009 edition, John Quelch has wonderfully articulated the four types of consumer mind mindset that will be around after any recession or a downturn. The mindsets look like this. He says the first one is slam on the brakes is the mindset number one. And the mindset two is paint, but patient. And the third, live for today. Fourth, comfortably well. The traditional way of demographics, nor the lifestyle, will hold good during these periods. You need to look at these mindsets and say, which one of these mindsets that I'm going to cater to? For example, slam on the brakes mindset. They'll only look for bare necessities at this point of time. Pained but patient will be trading down this time. They will either buy less quantity or less frequently or both. Live for today are the people most probably could be youngsters. They have neither saved because they have not saved before. They haven't lost much until they lose their job. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And the last one, Comfortably well are those who might not make significant changes in their purchase behavior during these times. You really need to understand these need states before closing the gap. You really need to also go after bad costs. What are bad costs? Preserve or conserve inventory which adds value to your customers or you do more of. You need to reduce inventory, which is not productive for your customers. You always need to look at the customer benefit aspect to evaluate all the inventory that you have today and also the inventory that you plan to produce for the coming seasons. You all look at revenue. Where does the revenue really come from? Revenue comes from store. A store can be digital or it's physical. But you really need to understand the demographics of your customers, the psychology of your customers around each one of your stores. Everything starts from the store. For you really need to not only plan the what part of it, which is what is the right assortment for your stores and also how much your stores need. This needs to be done very intelligently. Most of the current systems look at clustering stores. Now clustering stores is a heuristic because uh, it's humanly impossible to understand each and every store at fin finer details. Like individuals like us, every store is another human being. How do we ensure that we have hyper personalization of assortment to these stores? It's going to be super important because if you don't get the right merchandise to the right store, the demand contraction problem will only magnify. Now, what does it all take to do all of this? We really need to reinvent our core processes. Where should we reinvent our core processes? It all starts from consumer research, consumer and product research. The traditional ways of consumer research may not work. For you really need to have a data-driven way to understand consumers on an ongoing basis. You also need to retool your merchandising. One way to look at merchandising is, which are all the aspects of your merchandise where you have headroom from low to high? If you just put them on a two by two matrix, you'll have a low headroom and a high headroom. 
and you also look at your current productivity low productivity versus high productivity you will have four different quadrants for example you have a high headroom category and a high productivity this is something that you really need to put your accelerator on you really need to retool demand prediction what i mean by this is uh, you know we keep telling our uh, uh, customers quantity estimation is as important as quality of products there is no product which is a bad product if it is made in the right quantity so hence predicting demand of every single item color is super critical to navigate this uncertain period with that let me just quickly introduce what we do at stylumia our background and various solutions we have and how we can solve the challenges that uh, we have looked at so far and how all the five ways can be applied we are a bunch of data scientists and fashion professionals we started uh, in december 2015 we are in existence for 4 years and 3 years in the market 4 years as a company we created the world's first ai driven fashion brand uh, we have global presence across uh, you know five different cities with uh, bangalore being our head office and we have uh, compelling technology partnerships with that background of stylumia let me just take you through how we are solving this problem in a very unique way we have a very very unique approach to solving this problem by building three different engines from a fashion supply chain perspective the first question we always ask is uh, how do we spot winning ideas so we said let's build a trend validation engine which is completely demand driven now it's very important uh, i just want you to get it all existing fashion forecasting systems today are supply driven there isn't a single demand prediction engine a demand sensing engine so stylumia has a very unique demand sensing engine i'm going to talk about it uh, very soon the second thing as i told you that quantity prediction of products is as important as the quality of uh, products so we have i would call it a crystal ball for fashion which is uh, how do you predict demand of an unseen new product which i'm going to launch for spring summer 2021 that's our prediction engine and what's cooking in our lab is can we generate designs using ai uh, which can augment the capabilities of uh, designers to come out with winning innovative design ideas in effect we are we are an intelligence layer sitting between the market you and your enterprise systems if i have to put that in a different perspective from prediction being our core capability we help you from fashion trend research to pre season prediction to in season predictive distribution all to do three things how do we delight your consumers how do you stay relevant and stay ahead always let's look at it from a supply chain perspective of fashion our solution market intelligence solution helps you to do trend research in a consumer driven way and before you place the bets with your manufacturing you decide using apollo how much to produce and uh, once you get all the products how do you distribute and these stores can be digital or physical we have an omni channel way of covering it and of course we have a solution also to analyze your own data in season irrespective of your supply chain calendar be it fast fashion be it a long calendar of say one year it's globally the supply chain calendar time is anyway shrinking which is definitely good if one has to be resilient and responsive in these uncertain times what kind of results have we delivered to our customers so far it's very important for you to understand right we impact key profit and loss variables we impact reducing unwanted inventory we improve your revenue growth and also profit growth the numbers you are seeing on the screen anywhere between 20 to 40% has been our uh, credential and track record so far with all our clients let's move over to various solutions we have we start with understanding the market first every brand has uh, their own data now what you don't do is more than what you do so where does an intelligence lie 
why not we learn from others mistakes and also others wins and uh, this is a compelling part of the equation for that leads to how do we spot trends oh that looks common but the question important question is to ask how do we spot winning trends now this is a non trivial problem you all must be doing fashion research uh, through various forecasting reports and you might be traveling all over the world understanding observing what's happening but the question is when you travel what do you see what do you see is what's out there what's out there is a function of supply as we all know fashion industry globally makes a lot of error in supply with respect to demand if you continue to observe supply you continue to make that proportion of error so what we developed is a unique demand sensing engine for example what you see on the screen is a representation of in case you really want to understand what's happening with your inspirational brand the case in point is anthropology women dresses what we do is we track every single product across various channels of distribution particularly online be it social be it uh, e-commerce we collect a lot of demand signals right which is proprietary in nature and the absolute demand data is not visible so we are left to decode the demand from what's available in the market we have a pre-trained neural network what it does is to analyze all of this data on a bi-weekly basis the entire world of fashion is ranked into good performing products best sellers mediocre and poor sellers you can do this across any brand any retailer any geography anywhere in the world for what you are left with winning products now from winning products you can abstract winning trends so this is super important because once you know what is winning you cut down 80% of your time on research for the kind of question that uh, we help you answer is right what are the winning dresses in for example us or what are the winning tops in japan or what are the winning uh, uh, suits or jackets uh, in europe for so you get a laser sharp fashion forecast and uh, you get a pipeline of winning product ideas if you really want to validate trends you can validate the trends that you are picking through your own source of inspiration and competition we are very customized and we really don't believe that fashion trends are one zero every brand has a unique dna so you can contextualize the forecast to your conditions so what you see is in three clicks you get to see what are the best performing attributes what are the best performing designs not only in retail we also cover fashion shows across the world and no human involved what you see here is machine curated trends based on the frequency of occurrence how various designers are thinking what are they thinking alike what are the popular trends and what are the niche trends and you can do that in your favorite designer favorite country favorite fashion shows and all of these digital assets are easily downloadable and usable by your design team would you like to see trends at various levels you can see trends across categories what's going up and what's coming down could i have spotted the athleisure trend well before anyone spotted yes by constantly looking at these trends you can pick what is an upcoming trend at various levels be it at the level of category be it at the level of material be it color or design or pattern so far we looked at how do we one pick winning ideas how do we validate trends how do we also de-risk my design in other words how do i inject intelligence into my design process here comes the next question now that i've got a range of design ideas as a brand we will be making designs which are unique of course inspired by what we see outside how well these new designs will perform so this is a very important question how do we predict the so called unpredictable so i'm going to show you a quick demo of how we can predict demand of a new product what you see here is 
uh, this brand is now predicting demand of a new women's dress by feeding all its attributes along with an image it's very important not only attributes and fashion cannot be described hence you really need to feed the model with a image what the model comes back with how good is it with respect to market and how good it's for your brand along with the predicted dollar demand for this product isn't it the crystal ball for fashion now while it looks simple it needs a fair amount of preparation let me quickly take you through what does it take to predict any new product you really need to understand the dna of your brand the dna of your brand is reflected in your past data for we collect last two to three years of your data right from sales transaction to stock transaction to sales uh, masters and product masters at item color level transaction across your omni channel for a category or across categories we train the model with both the textual data and the images that's very very important you cannot describe fashion hence you have to communicate the aesthetic attributes through pixels our ai engine the prediction model is an ensemble machine learning model which uses both image and text it decodes the taste of your customers using your data now is that good enough to predict the future you also need to give in what's the trend in the market what are the future signals now the future signals will come from our market intelligence solution and we can curate the market intelligence based on your sources of inspiration and they could be some of uh, the designers that you look up to we feed that intelligence into this model apart from your data once we pre train that model is when you start to use the prediction system it's almost like you take your camera shoot a particular picture that which you get inspired by a particular dress you get inspired by and the system tells you whether it is green amber red now has it worked and how do we prove performance of this engine what we do is we do a back test we look at your past data we train the model with 75% of the data and uh, test the model with the balance 25% which means last three seasons you train and predict the fourth season what you see on the screen is the kind of results that we have delivered we are able to improve the current forecast accuracy at item color level by anywhere between 10 to 40% i would say 40% is on the higher side but 10 to 30% is something that we have seen across most of our clients is that good enough and we have been talking about right to you get your item prediction right you could have got the right products you also would have made the right quantities but the question is the store is where the demand is coming from you really also need to intelligently distribute the demographics of stores are constantly changing the competitive environment of various stores are constantly changing how are you going to allocate merchandise at item color level to various stores is a non trivial task and particularly if you want to hyper personalize when we mean by hyper personalize what you send to store a need not be what you send to store b both in assortment and also in absolute uh, quantity or well, what it means is we have to do three things one predict demand of every single item for various stores on an ongoing basis and you do the first allocation which is very critical and first allocation typically is around anywhere between 40 to 60% of your seasonal demand so that's uh, very important and once you get the first allocation then constantly either replace or replenish and the way our models do it is again using both images and textual attributes see so decodes the visual nature visual taste of each of the stores which is aggregated for all the customers who are visiting those stores and this is done on a frequency which is depending on the nature and the size and the scale of the store and one we can always adjust the frequency so far we looked at how do we get winning market ideas uh, design ideas how do we 
predict the demand of new products or new designs that you have made and how do we intelligently distribute to various stores and hyper personalize them uh, as i mentioned before the uh, you know what is cooking in our lab is how do we use machines as an augmentation in the design generation which is the creative area itself we have the capabilities of converting sketches into bags again completely machine generated we also have the capability of converting data the data can be inspirational information or images from social media from your own past data of what your customers like the most or it can come from the market intelligence if you have a curated image set you feed into the generative adversarial network it will create design ideas the t-shirt you are seeing on the screen is completely mission generated the idea is to create a visual brief to the designers today designers are overburdened with the constant demand of more and more creative ideas one you really want them to be unique at the same time the volume of requirement is also constantly going up now this is uh, filling that gap how do we give visual aid to the designers which will help them generate winning ideas much faster quickly covering you know uh, you know some awards that we have got i think the best of awards is what our customers actually say but uh, you know noteworthy to mention we got the 2019 amazon ai award in retail as you can see uh, united nations uh, is championing for us as uh, they see us reducing the wastage in the fashion supply chain by eliminating the wastage due to the decision making gap ill informed decision making and uh, also fashion for good we've been working with uh, best seller for uh, over 3 years right now and uh, as you can see we're creating significant impact uh, in terms of uh, full price sell through and also uh, revenue lift in their business other case studies uh, as you can see here we work, work across various sizes of organization be it medium size large size and fortune 200 companies the areas of improvements are in the area of uh, forecast accuracy improvement full price sell through improvement and revenue lift uh, what is uh, you know the central theme of uh, all of the solution is everything is consumer centric it is data led not just based on your own data but also the overall collective intelligence which is lying out there in the market and why would you look at uh, stylomia i would say three reasons one is we are uh, the only one uh, demand sensing platform in the world and uh, we have very unique crystal ball predicting demand of unseen product in a very unique way and everything we do is customized for your brand we understand your customer and every whether it is from the market or from your own data let me try to sum up what are the key three uh, uh, takeaways for you the post pandemic market is going to be very different you really need to be not only looking at your loyal customers you also need to look at your the switchers and switchers are somebody who are never focused on who you really need to look at the data from outside in blended with inside out and create your product and merchandising and marketing assortments this is a time to really reinvent and retool uh, the planning and assortment processes across brands and retailers and a focus has to be definitely consumer and all consumers reach a store point for store has to be at the center of everything we do and uh, that's about it and really enjoyed uh, uh, sharing uh, the uh, biggest challenge of fashion which is lying ahead which has always been there being amplified through covid what are the five different ways that one could address this problem i was able to take you through various solutions we have and how you could adapt them and uh, really enjoyed uh, doing that with you and uh, over to you anina for question uh, session 
Wow, Ganesh, that was so enlightening about how we can use AI to help us after this period to really like get our, you know, rocket boosters back on and, and get our businesses under control. Uh, I think that it's an incredible opportunity also in the long term, this situation or not, to really get sustainable, you know, in your production. I love it. And uh, I would love to take some questions from the audience right now. Yeah, hi, Anina. Look forward to the questions. Okay, we have here um, Richard, and he says, for using AI, should I be a large enterprise? Yeah, it's a very good question, uh, you know, Anina. I think, uh, you know, this is a question that we get uh, asked by various uh, prospects. Uh, uh, if you just look at it today, we are all consuming AI, whether we know it or not, in our social media applications. For to consume AI, you really don't need to be, uh, you know, you don't need to have a different size of an organization. You don't need to be big enough to use AI. AI needs to be intuitive for anyone to use. Uh, just to give you facts uh, from our perspective, we, we have clients from small, medium to Fortune 200 clients. So it doesn't matter how big or small you are. Awesome. So yeah, so um, he, he also just said, uh, so AI is not only for big companies. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we have Yulia. And she says, do I need to be in the office to be using your application? Yeah, hi, Yulia. Uh, you know, particularly in these times, uh, you know, all of us are locked down at home and our applications completely work on the cloud. So you can be anywhere to use your application and it interacts with your data and interacts with the market data and gives you whatever you need and where you are. Awesome. So, all right, Kat Schuler's online, you know, Kat, and she says, do I need, uh, oh, sorry, do creative people find it easy to use these technologies? Yeah, hi, Kat. Uh, this is, uh, you know, super critical question. Uh, fashion industry is so creative and everything starts from designers. So whatever we do, the first thing we kept in mind is how do we make it very relevant and usable for creative and product teams? One thing we have done in that perspective is make the entire user interface very visual. You see a lot of images right? You don't see graphs moving here and there. It's not full of numbers. It's super easy to use. In fact, most of our users are designers. Designers make us stick with them. And uh, it's not that, you know, we got it right the first time. We have been listening to lots of point of views and feedbacks through the last three to four years. And I can say with a fair amount of confidence that designers find it very useful to use Stylumia. All right, we've got Marcus here. He says, how do you manage security of the data? Yeah, this is, uh, the, you know, this is also a very pertinent question, particularly, you know, all AI models needs a lot of data. As you have seen through the presentation, we use two types of data. One is what's in the market and uh, your own data. I think this question is a lot more relevant to your own data. Uh, for us, data integrity is super critical. Uh, the way we do that is uh, we are open to hosting our application in a private cloud with full security so that your data does not move out of your private cloud. We can also do on-premises implementation. We have done that. And at an extreme level, we can work on a client's hardware and your VPN to an extent that data does not go even out of the network. And we also have security policies in place even the data science engineers who would be using the application would not have uh, any permission to access your data other than just processing them. Hope that gives you some confidence on the data security bit. All right, we have a simple question from Anna Stern. Does it really work? No, this is a first question that you know we get asked, right? Whenever you go with any innovation, everybody wants to know that does it work? from an outcome perspective, right? Have you seen results? Uh, I have touched a bit of that through the presentation, but to share with you that now we have enough 
proven case studies. There is a case study online with the, the Denmark-based bestseller group where we have increased their full price sell-through between six to eight percent. And we have improved forecast accuracies uh, of prediction for various clients, right from Fortune 200 to a medium-sized company, anywhere between 10 to 40 percent. You know, in fashion industry it makes 10 percent EBITDA, an increase in accuracy of a 10 percent in forecast will can give you 30 to 40 percent in profitability. All right, we have David here, and he says, can I reduce the number of staff when I use technologies like these? That's a simple, it's a very good question, right? And uh, let's look back, uh, you know, and see that when the mobile phone came, when computers came, did the jobs reduce? The question is that we all became a lot more productive. So it's a question of augmenting human uh, capabilities rather than eliminating human. So where we come from is, can we do more with less? And that's a question that uh, we are answering here. All right, we have another one for you. I mean, they're just coming at you. So how long does it take to get started using AI? Our solutions uh, typically, uh, you know, if you look at various modules, if you just go with market intelligence, you get started in just one week with an onboarding and training. And if you're looking at demand prediction for future, which involves a lot of data from your end and also our end, our proof of concept takes 14 to 16 weeks. We get running with a model developed, completely understanding your brand and in, an, in a position to predict demand of unseen products in 14 to 16 weeks. And then you do a thin size pilot and then completely scale across your business. All right, last one we have here, Jill, how much data do I need? If you're going with just uh, market intelligence, you really don't need any data. This is outside intelligence. You just need to tell us which markets, which countries, which brands, retailers that you get inspired by or who their competition are. But if you really want to do demand prediction for future, we typically expect at least two like for like seasons of data, which would mean two years of data, more the merrier. Uh, you might ask, right, if I'm a new brand and I don't have any past data, can I still go ahead and predict? Yes, you can. In that case, what we can do is we can look at what's a relevant market for you. We can use the entire market intelligence data to predict your new brand. For, there's all sorts of possibilities, but just need to understand your context and we can get going. Wow. Ganesh, such a pleasure to have you here. Also, you know, we have you on another panel uh, with Kat Schuler and Katie Schildmeyer, where you'll be talking about fit and how you can use AI again to help with this exact problem. So thrilled. And uh, yeah, in, in closing, is there anything that you would like to tell our audience right now uh, about uh, how to get ahead in this coming you know, era? First of all, I thank uh, all the audience and uh, their uh, engaging questions. Uh, really enjoyed that. And thank Anina for this wonderful opportunity. If I have to just leave something for everybody out there, I would just say that uh, the world is getting more and more uncertain. In these times, I think the best way to navigate is to continue to experiment, right? Do not expect, if you really want to be 100% sure, you will be 100% late. <laughs> That's brilliant, I love it. <laughs> Anybody here does not want to come late to the party, that's for sure. <laughs> Ganesh, so thrilled to have you. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. I learned a lot, and I'm sure our audience did too. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.